My next guest says these measures and a more dovish Fed are setting tech up nicely for the rest of the year, calling it the safety blanket trade. <laughs> Let's bring in Dan Ives of Woodbush joining me here on set. Dan, it's good to see you. Great to be here. What do you mean by safety blanket? The, the kind of warm and cozy, everything's going to be okay <laughs> again kind of idea. Well, and the one that Sunday night you don't have to worry about headlines coming from tech. I think if you look at it, it's really sort of a combo set up in terms of numbers where the decks have been cleared, in terms of guidance. I think fundamentals holding up better than expected. And I think risk reward on tech continues to be compelling. That's why you're seeing more and more move to tech. And we believe it's not done. I think tech continues to be the trade this year. If I were an investor listening to what Mike Darda just said and saying, you know what, let me get out of the cyclical stuff and get to the stuff in tech that's most like healthcare, <laughs> what to you would be kind of most ignorant or least prone to the cyclical waves in the economy? Because my first thought goes to the Facebooks and the Googles. It seemed like they'd be more ad exposed. Maybe that's not where you'd want to be. Um, but just kind of give us the broad picture here. How how resilient do you think these companies are likely to be to a slowing economy? Well, I think it's been rock or Gibraltar so far. If you look at cloud, look at names like Microsoft, Salesforce.com. Look at names like Datadog as well as other than cybersecurity. I mean, Palo Alto, uh, CyberArk, among others. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And also... With a lot of these tech companies ripped in the Band-Aid off, of course, we've seen with Zuckerberg and now with Jazzy and Amazon, that ultimately has really laid the ground for what's going to be the next cycle. And I think that's why the street likes what they're seeing here on tech, which I continue to think is under-owned, you know, especially going back, in my opinion, I'd say 2010 in terms of the sentiment right now mm. in tech. So if I think back to the 2010s, and this was the period that Fang obviously took off. Now, it was also its creation, right? Google went public in 04. So part of the beauty of the 2010s was in a low-growth economy, you had companies that were massively growing. You know, what was the growth rate? I think it was 25% on average. I mean, something insane like that. Will that work this time around? Have these companies matured to that beyond that point in which they're just going to grow with GDP, which you might not want to be exposed to? What are the parts of tech that are still growing more than GDP? Yeah, and it's a great point. I mean, if you look in a 2 3% IT spending environment, cloud's growing 23 to 25%. Even if you look at wow. Microsoft, look at what Nadell is doing, even AWS, and then you look at cybersecurity growing upper 20s. So that's why it speaks to this fourth industrial revolution, and despite the macro, the uncertainty, what we're seeing in banks, I think that's what tech's setting up for in terms of the next cycle. And I think many use their 2022 playbook in 2023. And that's why I believe tech here, it's the safety blanket in the storm. And as an investor, Sunday night, you're not checking your you know, email, figuring out what the next uh, Worrying if are. your company's going to fail. Um, quick comment on cybersecurity. Is there any risk there of people piling in because it's done relatively well? Um, what are the valuations like? Yeah, in terms of the pile-on trade, I mean, we're still about 30% below the average over the last five years. I also think there's going to be a surge of m and I think that's the other thing. You look at SVB and others. That's going to catalyze these companies in terms of strong will get stronger in terms of this m and We see a tidal wave of m and coming in cybersecurity. And other areas as well, or just more unique there? I think overall tech. I think we will have tech M&A up about 25% this year, both on the private side as well as public. And that's why a lot of these companies, they have more cash in some countries. And they're, they're going to, despite some of the antitrust worries, they're going to be going aggressively after. And I think that's what you're seeing in tech being green, where a lot of these other sectors are red. Yeah, actually, dear, just we'll talk about all of that cash a little bit later on. Point well taken. Dan, it's good to see you. Thanks for Thanks coming for in today. Me. I appreciate it. Dan, I.